Smash. <clears throat> so I smash the chair into the desk that has the microphone on it. Why? Because that's just how I roll. I am the great one himself. Cynical Libertarian Society, C-Y-N-L-I-B-S-O-C dot com on the interwebs. This anarchy moment is showing up in the middle of a Stating the Obvious series in which I'm bitching about girls. And the Stating the Obvious series is getting longer and longer as my notes get longer and longer and I think of more things I want to say. But I had a relevant and related thought that I just wanted to toss out on its own. And that is the need for an exchange of ideas in order to reach the most useful conclusions, the most enlightened perspectives in order to reach a point of the greatest understanding of reality. What are the three most important things for a person as you go through life? Not for, not for statist and femistatist and statheist and all these other shit fucks. I'm talking about three most important things for those of us who are anarcho-capitalist. Well, here's my opinion on what the three most important things are for an anarcho-capitalist. Number one understanding and application of the non-aggression principle. I would even say application and understanding of the non-aggression principle version 2.0 as Michael W. Dean calls it, although I'm really fucking sick of people calling things version 2.0. It's, it's, it's really fucking gay. And I don't mean homosexual, I mean gay, okay? Because the phrase version 2.0 cannot be gay. It can't have sex with other phrases that are version 2.0. Okay, so it, it's, not, it's not homosexual, for those of you who think that gay means homosexual. It's just fucking gay. So anyhow, I really like Michael W. Dean's non-aggression principle 2.0. I just hate calling it the non-aggression principle version 2.0 because it sounds so stupid just so lame and wah 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 and just I, it, I mean it's, it's just me it doesn't matter it's semantics I just I want a better name for it right remembering as much as I love Michael W. Dean he's the same guy who's like who's have repeatedly said that we shouldn't call ourselves anarcho-capitalist because anarchy and capitalism are two of the worst words and we should fight you know blah blah, blah whatever that's why I love anarcho-capitalist, because the Republicans are trying to take libertarian, right? I've bitched about this. I did a whole podcast. I think it was a two-parter about this. You know, you got Glenn Beck calling himself a libertarian. I mean, Ron Paul, not a libertarian. You got Julie Berinsky calling herself, you know, there's all these people running. I'm a libertarian. No, you're a fucking Republican. Stop stealing our fucking words. So anyhow, the point is, let me get back to the topic. I could just fucking wander all day long. Gee, me staying, me going off topic. When the fuck has that ever happened, right? Non-aggression principle 2.0 says that you shall not initiate aggression against other people, nor allow aggression to be initiated against you. Which means that when people initiate aggression against you, you will defend yourself. So that's number one. Important thing, non-aggression principle and not just the understanding of it, 
right? Because for anything like this, there's the intellectual understanding, and then there's the application, right? You can have an intellectual understanding of mathematics, but if you don't know how to apply it, oh, shit, I just remembered something I need to talk about in the podcast about girls. Give me one second. Girls geometry. Girls don't understand geometry. I don't know why that's so fucking hard. It's like, it's like, girls, they don't understand math, logic, or geometry. I don't know why these things are so fucking hard. All right, anyway. You have to intellectually understand something. You have to have an understanding of a concept, but then you also have to be able to apply the concept. You have to understand math and apply math. You have to understand how to pilot an automobile, but then you have to be able to apply the understanding of piloting an automobile. You have to understand how to use audio equipment to record a podcast, like for example, how to slam the chair into the desk that has the microphone on it, and then you have to be able to apply it. So you have to understand how slamming the chair into the desk will fuck things up, and then you have to actually be able to slam the chair into the desk and actually fuck things up. Right, so there's understanding, there's application. So, you also have to say the word so a lot because it makes you sound like an idiot. It's late, I'm tired, I've been doing a lot of shit. I think I'm gonna be up for a while too. I'm having one of those creative bursts. Do you ever have those where you you know, you know get your second wind and you're, you're just getting shit done and things are happening? That's where I'm at right this minute. I'm getting shit done. Anyway. I should be going to bed soon. It's almost my bedtime. I should definitely not be looking at a computer screen, but here I am. Anyway, blah, 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 that you don't give a fuck. Let me get back to the topic. I'm trying to remember what the topic was. Oh, yeah. Understanding and application of non-aggression principle. That's number one important thing. Number two important thing, the understanding and application of property rights. Now, a part of property rights is economics, right? Because property includes, well, property includes everything that is yours. That includes your time and your money because money is time. And if you read Aaron Clary's excellent book, Bachelor Pad Economics, he will explain this to you. You can read Mises and all this other stuff and all these economic understandings, and that's, that's great. Okay, But read Bachelor Pad Economics by Aaron Clary, and he will explain economics so simply, so elegantly, and so beautifully that it's, it's, it's like the... It's like, Austrian economics in five paragraphs because it really is that simple and people think it isn't but it really is he also has this great video on YouTube I can't remember what it's called if I remember to do it I'll link it in the show notes for this where he explains again beautifully elegantly simply why you can't just print more money why that doesn't work so as part of property rights, understanding and application of property rights includes among it economics. It includes money, it includes your spending habits, it includes debt, it includes all of these things. All right, so economics, money, property rights, all of that really is the same things. That's the second most important thing if you're a anarcho-capitalist. The third most important thing, if you're an anarcho-capitalist, is other people. Human companionship. Because we, we are humans, and humans are social animals. Even people like myself, I'm fairly... So I got distracted. Shiny object, oh my god. I mean, I'm fairly introverted, and I can go for 
fairly long periods of time without human interaction, especially in the winter as we're sliding into winter. We're in fall right now, but we're sliding into winter. Once the snow falls, I mean, I can go days without going outside. I can give a flying shit about going out in the cold and the snow and you know, just fuck all that. But even even then, even being a fairly introverted person who doesn't need a lot of human interaction, I still need human interaction with other people as opposed to human interaction with not other people or some shit. You know, as opposed to internet. I don't count going on the internet and posting on forums and Facebook and horse shit like that. That's not human interaction. That's just fucking masturbating to a computer screen. Human interaction means real life people. Okay, so that's the third thing, human interaction. Now, as anarcho-capitalist men, most of us are men because there aren't a lot of women in our movement. We've talked about that before. It's because women value community. Community is based on conformity. Women are not going to give up conformity because women are objects, not agents. They have no ability to determine right from wrong on their own. Therefore, women are not going to go down the anarcho-capitalist path unless they're guided by a man, and they're not going to, you know, they're, they're just not going to go looking for that because that's not conformity. So that's the short version of why there are very few female and caps. As men, what kind of human companionship do we value more than anything else? For those of us who are not homosexual, and that's not that's not ragging on homosexuals, I'm just saying this this does not include you if you're a homosexual. For those of us who are heterosexual and caps, we like girls. Now homosexual and caps have it made well, I shouldn't say they haven't made. I mean, they're anarcho-capitalists. The government's going to kill them at some point. But at least when it comes to finding somebody to have sex with that shares their philosophical beliefs, at least they have a reasonably good chance of you know, finding another anarcho-capitalist because they're looking to have sex with men. We as anarcho-capitalist men who are interested in having sex with women... We're pretty much fucked, and not the good kind of fucked. Not the good kind of fucked like anarcho-capitalist men who are homosexuals who can find quite a few homosexual anarcho-capitalist men and get it on. Unfortunately, you can't reproduce that way, because if they could, that actually be good, because that would mean more anarcho-capitalist. Fuck, that sucks, man. If, if men could get other men pregnant, that would be one way to increase the number of anarcho-capitalists. Doesn't fucking work that way, goddammit. All right, anyway. I'm babbling. It's okay, though, because I can do that. It's my fucking podcast. And I'm making the rules, goddammit. It all work and no play makes Johnny a dull boy. Johnny's home. So it's girls. It's girls. We love girls. Girls are great. Girls are fantastic. So we have three primary areas of life which as anarcho-capitalists we need to focus on understanding and application of the non-aggression principle of property rights and economics and of girls now On one hand, we've got the anarcho-capitalist movement. We've got people like Ben Stone, Michael W. Dean, who else? I'm leaving out Stefan Molyneux for a reason. Just hang with me. And others, what I just, those are the ones I'm thinking of right now. They're really big on non-aggression. They're big on property rights and economics. You know, Ben Stone. I sing his praises all the time. Oh, Larkin Rose. Larkin Rose. Non-aggression, property rights, economics, self-ownership, history. Right? All of those things. Michael Dean, Ben Stone, Larkin Rose. Brilliant. Absolutely fucking brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Nothing about girls. 
Not a fucking word. Then, in the Manosphere, you've got a bunch of Manosphere writers like Roosh and Troublemaker and Matt Forney. Really good input on economics and property rights. Fantastic input on girls. But many of them, like, for example, Matt Forney, who is a Republican, no fucking concept of the non-aggression principle. Some of them, like Troublemaker, I think I, I don't know this for a fact. He seems to have some li some uh, libertarian, some anarcho-capitalist leanings. But I don't want to label anybody in the manosphere as anarcho-capitalist because I don't really know that they are, and I don't want to say somebody's an ANCAP when they're not. I don't want to say that. But most of them, from what I've seen, are Republicans. There are some ANCAPs in the manosphere. There's a Apocalypse Now blog. Is it Apocalypse Now? God, why am I not? Fuck, my brain hurts. Hang on. I've got my... There is... Where is it? Oh, here it is. Apocalypse cometh. The apocalypse cometh. He's he's pretty anarcho-capitalist, and he's manosphere. So my point is, now, and then of course there's Aaron Clary, the the man, Captain Capitalism, the man who I'm telling you to buy his book all the fucking time, Bachelor Pad Economics. Buy the fucking book, okay? Just fucking trust me. He's not paying me to say this. He should be. I'm fucking telling you, buy the fucking book. Bachelor Pad Economics. Don't be such a fucking tightwad. And then give me some Bitcoin. Go over to the fucking CYNLIBSOC.com and fucking do the Bitcoin address and give me some fucking Bitcoin for being cool enough to tell you to buy this book that's going to change your fucking life, especially if you're young. If you're like a 16, 17, 18 year old boy, buy fucking Bachelor Pad Economics by Aaron Clary and also buy Worthless. It will fucking save your life. All right, now. You got Aaron Cleary dishing out economic advice and advice on girls that is absolutely untouchable. Absolutely untouchable. I mean, I, I don't think he's said anything that I think is wrong when it comes to dealing with girls or economics. He's brilliant. Everything that every, Go to his YouTube channel, fucking subscribe, watch every video he puts out. Trust me on this. The other hand, in the ANCAP movement, you got Ben Stone. Ben Stone, complete understanding of non-aggression principle, complete understanding of how to apply it, understanding of history, understanding of economics, intellectual powerhouse. Doesn't say anything about girls. The manosphere and the anarcho-capitalist sphere, the ANCAP movement, the ANCAP community, the fucking ANCAPs, whatever. This is the problem. We're not going to call ourselves anything because we don't fucking centralize and have somebody organize us, right? We're, we're anarcho-capitalists. We don't fucking join groups or whatever the fuck it is. Okay. The ANCAPs and the Manosphere need to come together right now. Over me. The anarcho capitalist movement and the ANCAPs, Benjamin Stone, needs to bring non aggression principle and economics. Aaron Cleary and the Manosphere need to bring economics and how to deal with girls. And they need to come together, they need to overlap and expand. And that way, all three elements of life that are important and critical are now covered. You've got non-aggression principle, you've got economics and property rights, and you've got girls. You always need girls. This is what the ANCAP movement is missing, girls. And what is the manosphere missing? It's missing the non-aggression principle. The manosphere 
Too many of them, not all of them, again, not all of them, but so many of them are these fucking right-wing Republicans who, I mean, they, they just want the things that right-wing Republicans want. They want smaller government, but they still want the government to kill people. Until the Manosphere lets go of the government killing people, of their need for the government to kill people, they cannot be complete. And until the anarcho-capitalist movement embraces an understanding of the female mind, and I know that's an oxymoron, because remember, where here men go where women go. This is, and Stefan Molyneux has talked about this, this is why religions target women. Because if you get women in your cult, men will join the cult because men want to be where the fucking women are. Right? And if we want the anarcho-capitalist movement, movement, so like a bowel movement, yeah, we have diarrhea or something, I don't know. If we want anarcho-capitalism to spread, which I've already, I don't think it will in my lifetime. I, blah, blah, I've talked about this. This is, again, why it's the cynical libertarian society, not the optimistic libertarian society, blah, 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 blah. If, if we want more people to become anarcho-capitalist, we need more chicks. It's that fucking, again, you can fucking play or hate all you want. Okay, this is what Aaron Clary calls the reality principle. This is the fucking fact. You can fucking talk to me all you want about your highfalutin, cocksucking, you know. No, you don't know. That's why I'm telling you. Your highfalutin, cocksucking, non-aggression principle, and you read a philosophy book, and Stefan Mullen, you did a video and shit. Nobody gives a fuck, okay? If you want more people to adopt an anarcho-capitalist mentality, we need more ANCAP chicks. Because where women go, men will follow. This is a fucking fact. Just as, just as women are incapable of making decisions about right and wrong on their own, because they're objects, not agents, just as that is a fucking absolute truth to which there is no exception, it is an absolute truth to which there is no exception that huge numbers of men, and I've talked about this before, will change their political, social, economic, philosophical beliefs just so they can stick their dick in a woman. How many men have you known who are fucking Republicans? And then they start dating some chick who's a liberal Democrat, and next thing you know, there's a fucking Obama poster on their wall. How many atheist men will go to church in order to stick their dick into a woman? You know it's true. Is it offensive? I don't give a fuck if you're offended by this or not. It's the fucking truth. Where women go, men will follow. That is one of the reasons why we're where we're at now, because women have gone towards statism. Women love statism because statism gives them free stuff. It's here, here's free birth control, here's free money for making babies, you know, here's jobs so you don't have to do anything. And they're, women love statism. This is FEMA statism. Women fucking flock to statism. Men flock to statism right behind them. You want men to turn away from statism and embrace ANCAPism? Then you need to get chicks. You need to get girls. When, anar when anarcho-capitalism has girls, then it will become a mainstream movement. Movement. I keep using that word. I hate that word. It's just like non-aggression principle 2.0. I fucking despise that phrase. It sounds so stupid. Anarcho-capitalist movement. Ugh. Ugh. It just makes me want to barf. I don't know what else to call it. You know, it's just like any kind of movement. I just... Yeah. I use it only because I, I don't know a better phrase. I'm taking suggestions, though. If you have a suggestion, fucking please give it to me. Uh, that's what I say to the girls. Please give it to me. They're like, no, it's too big. Get away from me. Like, God damn it, I hear that all the time. So there it is. Here's what I think would be a great idea. 
I think we need a crossover podcast. Ben Stone and Aaron Clary podcasting together. Just think about it. Think about how great that would be. Why did I leave out Stefan Molyneux? Let me throw this in before I close up. Before I end the podcast, I'm going to close up. I'm going to fold in on myself. Stefan Molyneux, and this has been in the last couple of months, and I don't know what's going on, but he's done an awful lot of videos critiquing women, and I'm pretty fucking impressed with, you know, he did the video, Don't Date a Single Mother, which got all kinds of negative feedback, but it was absolutely fucking spot on. You know, Aaron Clary will tell you exactly the same thing. Don't date single mothers and don't date women who have a lot of debt because you'll get dragged into their debt spiral. You know, Stefan Molyneux saying, so Stefan Molyneux, he's, he's not completely at the level where with girls were like Aaron Clary, Matt Forney, Roosh V, where these guys are at. But man, I tell you what, you listen to some of the stuff, he's easily 80% there, maybe more. Which is even the funnier because Stefan Molyneux is hardly, well, as far as I know, Stefan Molyneux is not out there trying to meet girls and have sex with them, which is all the more interesting that he has as powerful and in-depth of an understanding of the female mind, again, an oxymoron, that he does. I mean, it's pretty fucking impressive for a guy who's married and is a stay-at-home dad to have that much understanding of the female mental process. Of course, Stefan Molyneux himself still doesn't understand that women are objects and not agents and are not capable of moral decisions. He thinks they are. When, in fact, most... Yeah, most of my evidence that I use to support my thesis that women are not capable of making decisions about right or wrong has actually come from Stefan Molyneux videos. So he just hasn't reached that conclusion yet for whatever reason. I think, it, I think it's just delusional thinking on his part. I mean, I, under, I can understand why he would want to believe that women are capable of being moral agents. I mean, it would be nice. It's a nice fantasy that 51% of the population of the planet Earth are agents who are capable of determining right from wrong on their own. I mean, that's a great fantasy, and I'd really like to believe that, but the fact is they're not. Well, okay, if women and men could do that, then it would be 100%. But it's not. 100% of the people on the planet Earth are not agents who can determine right from wrong. 51%, the entire female population, can't do it. Anyhow, there it is. I'm, I'm just putting that out. The Manosphere, Anarcho-Capitalism, Aaron Clary and Ben Stone. The Clary and Stone Podcast. Just think about it. Imagine how fucking awesome that would be. Imagine the amount of wisdom that would come. <laughs> I said come. Imagine the amount of wisdom <laughs> that you would get from a podcast with Ben Stone and Aaron Clary having a discussion about non-aggression, property rights, economics, and girls.